museum in the world documents the history of Mercedes like the one in Stuttgart. The journey in time begins under the roof with the founders of Mercedes, Gottfried Daimler and Carl Benz. In 1886, their motorized carriages laid the groundwork for the car. Former race car driver Hans Hermann says they were brilliant men who looked ahead even though they had to deal with a lot of criticism and were ridiculed to some extent. The development of the automobile is shown in the context of various time periods at the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart. It offers a lot of photos and video footage, in addition to the original vehicles. The visitor can wander through five kilometers of history, covering 120 years. Michel Bock says the museum doesn't simply want to give visitors a history of cars or the Mercedes-Benz brand or the Daimler company. It also wants to show the world. From the beginning of the 20th century, Mercedes wanted to produce faster cars. The luxury convertibles with supercharged engines were magic during the Roaring Twenties. And Hans Hermann looks for his favorite Mercedes among the diesel-powered cars of the 30s. He says it's here somewhere. And then he's delighted to spot it. He says it's the first car he took a ride in as a child. His dad took one for a test drive from Stuttgart to Ulm, where they had some relatives. He said we had to visit the relatives. He said he kept on looking at the speedometer to see how fast it could go. It probably went 125 downhill. Its speed was unbelievable, he adds. The experience left a mark on him. He too became part of history as the driver of a silver arrow in the 1950s. He says it was the ultra-fast streamliner W196. Many race cars are on display here. Hunt says they're of course genuine and great and bring back fond memories. He says this was the streamliner W196, the very first car he drove in Formula One. The young Hans Hermann drove for the Mercedes factory team, along with international stars like Sterling Moss and Juan Manuel Fangio. From that time, Mercedes cars were part of his life, even off the racetrack. The 180 Ponton, for example. Hunt says the Pontons were their company cars, which they had wherever they went to race. Moss had one, he had one, and of course Fangio had a convertible, this one. There was a small difference. Every once in a while, he borrowed a 300 SL to take a spin. The legendary sports car of the 1950s was also Elvis Presley's favorite. The Beatles also drove Mercedes models. Paul McCartney loved the tail fin. In 1984, Ringo Starr had this 190 upgraded. Nowadays, celebrities prefer to drive a Mercedes hybrid like this one. He says that the automobile industry is currently going through a phase it has already seen. At the turn of the century, there were already electric cars. The government prevented their production because the First World War broke out. We've come full circle. Electric cars are once again playing a major role. There's a lot to learn from the company's history, and a tour of the Mercedes-Benz Museum is a great opportunity to do 